The Ship John Wills jacket is widely considered as one of the best wax jackets in the world. It's also very expensive at $600 and there's a two year waiting list. So I bought a knockoff. Welcome, I'm Carl Morawski, and this is the channel that helps you own better, look better, and live better. Now, since I didn't want to wait two years or spend $600, I went to the Google machine and typed in Ship John Wills jacket. There. For $138, I can get the Ship John Wills jacket in a few weeks. While those poor suckers are waiting around for their copy to be made, I'll already have developed some serious patina on mine, and it says right there, Ship John Wills jacket. And with a picture of the thing right there. The company Boss Jackets claimed to be Canadian, but it appears my parcel is shipping to me from Pakistan. No worries, it's a global market after all, right? Finally, delivery day arrived, and I could barely contain my excitement as I tore open the poly bag to reveal... What the f And here it is, all things considered. I think it's actually really good. Look, it has some nice finishing, really heavy duty material. I mean, all the details are... Wait. Oh, wait a minute. No, actually, this is the real Ship John Wills jacket. This is what actually came from Boss Jackets, and it's, uh, well, it's a little different. Wait a minute, before we go any further, this actually has shoulder pads, like, like 1980s shoulder pads, and it only gets worse. Now, the original Ship John 24 ounce waxed canvas wasn't even an option with Boss Jackets, so I went with suede. And I guess this counts. It's some sort of suede from an animal. Although some spots are smooth and some are kind of crunchy, for lack of a better word. Now to their credit, they did use a YKK zipper and decent looking snaps, although they pale by comparison to the original in quality and finish. And the chest pockets, they're, they're missing the snaps entirely. My real Wills jacket is version one and is unlined. The version two is lined in nine ounce herringbone cotton and adds a two-way zipper. The Boss Jackets version is lined in a quilted viscose, which doesn't actually look half bad, but it's a far cry from the rugged workwear aesthetic that Ship John is known for. Hey, I'm sorry to cut in here, but I'm editing this video and I'm noticing that on the Color Jackets website, they actually list a few of their key people. Like this guy here, Chinese Afemfuna. I've never heard that name before. Lisa John and Chinese Afemfuma. Wait a minute, they have two Chinese Afenfunas? I gotta tell you, this first Chinese Afenfuna seems like he could be almost a model. As a matter of fact, hang on one second. Well, look at this. In addition to being a master pattern maker, our boy Chinese is also a fashion model. This guy, I don't know how he finds enough hours in the day. He's my new hero. Now this knockoff almost feels like somebody tried to build a Will's jacket by having it being described to them over CB radio. Yeah, it's got pockets, uh, they're, but they're kind of angular, and uh, it's got some shiny brass snaps, good buddy. You 10-4? Now what's likely is that Boss Jackets took one of their standard models, added the signature Ship John pockets, and called it good. There's no triple stitching, matter of fact, it's mostly single stitching. There is a gusset at back, although I think it's mostly for looks, and none of the quality details that make the genuine Ship John special. Now if you were looking for a jacket that resembles the Ship John Wills, well, this might fool somebody if they were standing 100 yards away at night and they were drunk. The Boss jacket really isn't all that bad quality. I'm definitely beating up on it a lot, but it's the level of something that you'd find at Wilson's Leather. But that's not my big problem with this knockoff. The real Ship John Wills jacket was the brainchild of somebody named Mike Elias, who was actually the founder of Ship John itself. And since it's become such a runaway success, of course they're gonna be imitators trying to cash in on what he made. But to not only copy that design, though they botched it, but to also use the brand name and the actual individual Will's jacket name, it feels really shady. And I really wonder how Mike Elias would feel about this himself. What's up, man? What's going on? How are you? I'm pretty good. How do you feel about it, being the guy who invented this thing? <laughs> it just sucks, man. It sucks that there are vultures out there, you know? I get worked up about things and then I take a deep breath and try to just keep working. You know, the only, the only thing we can do here is, is try to make things we try to make well and keep making them. The more time I spend worrying about that shit, the longer it's gonna take for people to get their jackets. <laughs> <laughs> now, if intellectual property theft doesn't bother you, what should is the fact that the jacket shown on the Boss Jackets website looks nothing like the jacket you receive. If you're gonna copy a design, at least make it a good copy. Where's the leather patch? Where are my damn pocket snaps? Now it says right here, top notch, raw materials adds to delicate craftsmanship. 
N nothing lost in translation there. Two decade old heritage of combining handmade craftsmanship with premium quality materials, precision and attention to each detail in leather products. It's like Kamala Harris level word salad here. No. <laughs> Now it's bad enough that Boss Jackets, NYC Jacket, Hit Jacket, America Jackets, Film Jackets, Color Jackets, and Jackets Junction have no issue ripping off a small American maker, but they all use the exact same photo, which actually appears to be a genuine ship, John, and one of the older versions at that. Now I wonder how a big brand like Shot with lots of money and lots of lawyers would react if these companies made a Shot 618 knockoff the same way. Now, I don't really have a problem with products that are inspired by others. After all, we can't all reinvent the wheel each time. And I don't really have an issue with homages. It could be an affordable alternative to something that's really, really expensive, as long as you know what you're getting. But this here, this is more like a cheap knockoff Rolex that you'd buy on 42nd Street in New York City, if that's where they still sell them. In fact, I wouldn't even suggest this as a decent alternative to the Wills jacket. For that, I would say go with Tin Duck Denim and their trucker jacket if you don't wanna wait the amount of time and it's actually a little bit more affordable. But this thing, I don't even want it hanging around in my closet influencing my other products, right? It's just gonna be a bad thing altogether. Yeah, I'm talking about you. So it's gotta die. But why is the Ship John Wills jacket so expensive with a two year waiting list? Obviously people want it. Well, if you wanna know, I did a full review video right here. You can check that out. And in that video, I break this thing down piece by piece. The things that I love about it, of which there are many, and the things that I don't like about it. I was very honest in that video. And uh, so you can check that out if you wanna know more. Thank you so much for watching. This has been a fun one to make and I'll catch you next time.